Yeah, we got hard work. Uh, we train very hard. But I think all the teams around the world train very hard now because all the science that's involved in, in uh, how we train has probably changed a lot. I guess the big thing for us now is how we recover because there's so much cricket and there's so much travel. Um, recovery's become a big part. So whether it's ice baths or eating the right foods, not drinking alcohol, all those sort of things, getting plenty of sleep. Um, those are the reasons that you can stay fit and healthy. So it's a combination of things. You have to do the hard work. You can't just sort of roll up and expect to play. Um, and it's not just work in the gym, it's skill work as well. So that you feel that your skills are in a good place to perform because there's always pressure for spots, there's always pressure from the media, uh, and there's also pressure from the public that want to see guys playing at a, a high level. So, um, all those expectations mean that you have to work hard, otherwise someone else will do it and, and be better than you. Yeah, so. Which West Indian fast bowler would you like to face? The back in the 80s, probably none of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, they're not as strong as they used to be, so uh, it's been, as a batsman, it's actually probably been quite nice to face a few of their guys in the last few years, uh, and quite a few guys around the world have probably made some nice big scores, but I had a lot of respect for the West Indians from many years ago. I've been fortunate and very privileged to have met quite a few of them when we toured there a couple of years ago, uh, and I was very lucky to meet my idol, uh, Sevid Richards, on that tour, and he was magnificent, so um, I, I think probably the best of them. They always said that Malcolm Marshall was the greatest, um, but unfortunately, you know, he passed away. But um, you know, whether it's Kirtley Ambrose or Courtney Walsh, any number of them, the, you know, the list goes on and on. But um, I was, I guess, fortunate that I was only watching them on TV and not, not getting to face them. But I've always loved uh, facing quick bowling, having grown up in Perth on a quick wicket. So it would have been nice to have seen how it went, but that'll never be. Hi, this is Abhishek. I would like to ask you a question about your. Sorry. I would like to ask you a question. Okay, I'd like to ask you a question regarding the format of the game. So, as a cricket player, what do you think about T20s coming up and uh, One Day Internationals? Uh, are we playing too much of T20s and One Day Internationals without giving importance to the Test cricket? As a cricket player, what do you, what is your choice? Mean, what do you think should be the uh, format of game that has to be given primary, primary importance? Yeah, it's a good question because um, Test cricket is obviously under pressure from the other forms of the game because obviously the money that's involved in one day cricket and 2020 cricket is a lot greater. So guys are more inclined to be trying to play 2020 cricket. It's a lot easier to play because, I shouldn't say it's easier, but it's easier physically because you only have to be out there for an hour or an hour and a quarter and guys only have to bowl four overs. So the quick bowlers around the world, it's a lot easier for them to play that and obviously you know, the IPL guys can make a lot more money than they do playing four months of the year and then having to work hard in test cricket. So the danger is a lot of the quick bowlers around the world will retire from test cricket and just do that. But my preference is personally um, playing test cricket because that's what I love playing. Um, but I think, you know, everyone's different. Some guys love playing 2020 cricket. Um, some guys love playing one day cricket. But, you know, at the end of the day, there is probably too much cricket being played. Uh, and it's reaching a point where there's, there's so much that something's got to give. So whether it means that Test cricket starts to get weaker because the best players get injured and they're, they're focusing on 2020 cricket, I hope that doesn't happen because uh, hopefully Test cricket can stay strong for a long time to come. Once again, some students in the middle, can you come forward again? Uh, I can see some people struggling at the end to make way. Please leave the corridor empty as far as possible. On right, left, wherever you find a place. Even sitting on the floor is all right for Tanya. Try to leave the front open, in case. Hi. Uh, don't you think after the retirement of Gilchrist, Gaden, yourself, and all the people <laughs> in that category, but thank you. <laughs> Those are really big but after their retirement, Australia is not the Australia. I mean, we used to see the Australia and it is now only Australia. So, don't you think that, uh, don't you think that Australia has become weak and 
was it that only it was just a proof that some good people came in and there was some good cricket or was it the culture of Australia which helped uh, make these great teams? I think uh, at that level it always takes time for guys to find their feet. Um, I look at guys like you know Steve Ward took him about 26 tests to make his first test 100. So the young players that we've got coming through now they need a bit of time to, to find their feet at test level uh, and feel comfortable at international level because it doesn't just happen overnight. And the same can be said, you know, if Shane Warne had been dropped after his first couple of tests, you know, who knows, we might never have seen one of the greatest of the game, if not the greatest bowler of all time. So that's what the selectors have to do now, is try and find, you know, the next lot of talented players to take us through to the next phase. So we have lost a lot of great players. Um, and look, that'll happen to the Indian team soon as well. We're, you know, losing Sachin and Noah. Those guys, so you guys better watch out as well. So, India has a large population. We'll find more. And just a request, uh, just say hi to Adam Gilkis from this side. That's it. <laughs> Excuse me. My name is Siddharth. I mean, the Australians are always being criticised of being over aggressive on the field. No. They are not the nicest people on the field. I mean, that's all the strong. So, is it something that you guys plan in the dressing room? <laughs> <laughs> or is it just unfortunate that the whole season that way? Yeah, look, it's, uh, it is something we talk about in the rooms. I mean, it's <laughs> one of the best, best sledges of all time. You know, guys like Steve Waugh and Matty Hayden and Shane Warne and Glenn McGrath. You know, I grew up, these guys were sort of, you know, mentors, I guess, to a lot of us younger guys. So, you know, that's how we learned how to sledge. You know, and, you know, I think a lot, of it, a lot of it's different now. I don't think there's as much of it that goes on because there's so much coverage with the media, um, stunt mics and all that sort of stuff. So, you don't tend to see too many confrontations now between the players. Uh, but we did have a bad reputation there for a while, so... Um, but seeing as those guys are no longer around, I think it's probably maybe that's probably why we might have dropped down the rankings a bit. We've gone a bit too soft. <laughs> uh, I just want to say something about them. I haven't spent a lot of time with Shane Or have a little bit more life in it um, the first day or two, so that, you know, we can 
to lose the ball and gradually flatters out and becomes a good wicket and speaks at the end. You know, maybe that's something that has to be done. But um, yeah, at the moment there are probably a lot, lot more draws and test wins and, and uh, results. So, you think he is being overemphasized in the season cricket? Age, age. Oh, definitely. <laughs> 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 We can see the English story about the city of the Many people did two things until they are in the thirties. Yeah, look, I think uh, I've said this all along. You know, Joe is a great example, Tendulkar is a great example. It shouldn't be about age, it should be about performance. Uh, and if you've got the desire and you work hard enough and you're still performing, then you, know, you should be able to do what you love doing. Uh, they're doing that. Um, but yeah, unfortunately I'm not able to do that. But uh, that's the way it goes, that's life, uh, and you move on. So, but I'm still, I'm still going to enjoy playing cricket for New South Wales and wherever else. So, um, I'm very fortunate to be doing a lot worse than my mom. So, I can't complain. Uh, so, uh, Can I again ask some of the students to walk from the left? Because... Uh, sir, good evening. Uh, this is Tarun, sir. Uh, 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 India has been known for its batting, I mean, more known for its batting rather than bowling. And uh, uh, Australians, I want to know, do you fear about Indian bowling? I mean, <laughs> and if you do, I mean, uh, uh, who is the I mean, player who has worried you the most? Well, I think, you know, whenever, whenever we come here, obviously the spinners, because the wickets are different to what we play at home, the spinners are always a concern for us. Uh, so Harbhajan and Kumble and those sort of guys have always been a challenge. Um, but I think now Zahir Khan, obviously he was injured in England. He was a huge loss for you guys. He's very experienced. He's very good with the old ball and the new ball. Um, and he's played a lot of cricket around the world. So Sharma's someone that's getting better uh, the more he's playing. You know, he had a good tour in England. He was probably one of the few guys that took wickets, I guess. So, and so did Kravin Kumar, who's, he hasn't played a lot of cricket either, so, um, or test cricket, I should say. So, you know, there's, there's a few guys there that are probably going to you know, start to come into their own in the next year or two. So, apart from uh, uh, spinners, as in spinners are the strength, so fast bowling, what do you think about India? Can any, any time India go ahead with that? Oh, look, the, the fast bowlers probably enjoy coming to Australia because they get a little bit more assistance from our wickets. The wickets are quicker and bouncier, but here it's hard work on the quick bowlers because obviously hot, the wickets don't bounce a lot, so they don't get as much assistance, but Zahir Khan's done very well over here in these conditions, being able to reverse the old ball, and, uh, and he's also dangerous. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, he was a big loss for you guys, mate. Uh, hi, Samia Pallavi. Uh, yeah, I just want to ask my personal question. Why you going to studies, and you have to choose between cricket and studies, but I've always been like, you wanted to go ahead with cricket only because being in IIT and we face the dilemma that even if they are good at something, there is always the obvious uh, career option which you want to go forward with. So what is the thing which you like to tell us that if, if you are good at something, will be ready to uh, go with it or what is the thing which you did? Were you good? Did you have to make a choice or cricket was the obvious choice from the beginning? My, yeah, my choice would be to follow your heart and you do what you're passionate about. So that's what I've always done. I feel that I'm happy making that choice. Um, it was probably an easier option to go down the path of, of working and getting a job in because, as I said before, especially before it's comfortable when you're 18, 19 years of age, you don't have you know, enough to make it. Uh, and there's only so many spots. So it was a bit of a risk, but it was for me it was a risk worth taking because I was passionate about it. So um, I did enjoy studying. And as I said, it certainly has a lot of pressure on you, but um, I think if you, that's what you love doing, is whatever field it is, you follow your heart and you're passionate about it, then I think you'll do a good job of it because you're enjoying what you're doing, and that's what it is. Hi, Sam. Yeah, there's a very famous quote about the uh, game. So there are just two kinds of batsmen, Sachin and all the others. <laughs> so, what according to you makes him the biggest legend of the game? Sorry? What, according to you, makes him the biggest legend of the game? Oh, I guess the fact that um, you know he's done it for 20 years. I mean, it's not easy to be at that level for such a long period of time and to have the drive to continually want to get better and to be able to perform like he has in the last sort of 12 months or so. You know, to be able to get 201 day, you know, make a world record and 
and helping out the average lady in test cricket in the last year. And I'd like to do that as a 37 or 38 year old, I'm not sure how old he is now, he's right up there. Um, it's phenomenal because it takes you know, a, lot of, a lot of fitness, a lot of drive to do that. He's achieved everything in the game, there's not much else he has to achieve. But to be able to do that, it takes a phenomenal uh, amount of character, so you know, that's why he's, he's revered. <laughs> Hi Simon, I would like to ask this question to you that how much of your success of or the great of the team success is down to preparation and how much of it is due to the talent that you guys have? Well, I think uh, a lot of the time your preparation is, is what helps you perform because if you don't do the work, you sort of leave yourself open to not performing. Um, it's like anything whether you study for an exam, whether you, you don't get in the next practice for cricket. You go in with confidence if you've done the work and uh, done the preparation. If you don't, you go in a bit hesitant and you're not sure how you're going to go because you haven't done the work. So um, it's, it's not too dissimilar whatever field you're doing. Um, but in terms of test cricket, yes, we had a lot of talents in that team. But at time, time there was also a lot of different egos in that team and that's not always the easiest thing for the captain and coach to manage. So um, I think great teams aren't just about having great players. Yes, we had a lot of great players, but at the same time, you know, we had a lot of a lot of guys that were willing to do the little things for the team, so that the team had success. Damon? Yeah. Uh, we have limited time. I'm uh, just uh, going to ask a couple of photos to be taken with the larger group uh, with Simon, and maybe last two questions after this. Uh, not a cricketer, what would you have become? I mean, how? Do you to anyone? Not a cricketer, what would you have become? What do you see yep. yourself doing um, after a cricket? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I'll start with one more one. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Lakshman has especially been good against you guys. So, what do you actually think when he walks on the field? Do you think it's a big pain in the neck or a huge dead in the neck? Yeah, we always hope to see him when we play them. Uh, you look here, yeah, he's a great player. Um, and he's got a phenomenal record against us, so I wish we maybe we need to acquire the England bowlers, because I don't think he does as well against the English bowlers, so maybe we need to get them to play for Australia. But um, in regards to your question, yeah look I did the Bachelor of Commerce degree, so I was planning on maybe working uh, in that field. Um, that if that didn't eventually. Uh, when I finished, I'm actually planning for that now because I'm you know, I'm thirty six. I've only taken year by year now in terms of my cricket career, but I still love like, Playing, so I'll keep playing while I'm contributing to join that. Um, but I actually looked into uh, doing, doing some mentoring work, um, which is what I've been doing as captain of New South Wales when I finished. Um, you know, it's something that it, it'll be still in the sporting field, um, and it's something that I've enjoyed because I'm used to being around a team. I think it would be nice to be in that environment still and helping out young guys you know, in professional sport, which is what I've you know, having done for the last 15 years. Um, you know, you can go down the wrong path in professional sport and end up learning the hard way. It's through experience. That's something that I think I've got the skills to be able to pass on to all the younger guys. Last question. Yeah. Is it a habit or is it because you had a specific purpose in mind? Yeah, it kind of habit, but um, something I did when I first started playing for WA, uh, because of the wicket being the wicket bouncing at the wacker, if you didn't get in line with the ball, then you were a chance to nick the ball off the slips. Uh, and, and I guess for me, I wanted to play the most strength, so I was wanting to roll as a goal of just dumps in my pads. Um, so that was sort of the reason I did it, and then it kind of happened. And once you do something over a number of years, you complete it, and it's very difficult. Stop doing that, so I've sort of gone with it and thankful that made a few runs along the way. It's got me out a few times, but I think you know, cricket's about making runs as well, thanks to the managed to make a few runs.